Welcome to the Crypto Women panel. Thanks for coming. Um, for the next 20 minutes, it's going to be all tampons, periods, mood swings. So guys, leave the room now. This is your warning. Um, yeah. But in all seriousness, this is going to be the panel for discussing women's issues. Um, so if you've ever want, asked the question of why so few women show up to these things, um, how can we create or how can we draw more women into this space and create opportunities for them as um, founders or consumers of for customers of your business, investors, or participation in um, any scale. That's what we'll be discussing today. So we've got a really awesome panel here with us. Um, my name is Esther Tung. I'm from Vancouver with the Simon Fraser Bitcoin Club. We are the world's first university-run student club. Um, so we are about on the verge of getting our university to take Bitcoins for our campus bookstore. Um, Today, we were supposed to have the Bitcoin wife here, so she's not here today, but Marnie Melrose has taken her place. Um, would you like to start with the introductions? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, I'm a, a Bitcoin technology evangelist, and I've been in this world for a very short period of time, but I've actually been a technology evangelist for the last 12 years. And, you know, being in the computers, for 30 years, when I really understood what Bitcoin was all about and the impact that it could have for the unbanked 6 billion people, there's 7, people, 7 billion people in the world right now, and 6 billion of us don't have access to economic power. And a lot of those are women. A lot of the women in developing countries aren't even allowed to have banks. So I'm really excited about it. Um, so I'm Catherine Nicholson. I'm founder of a startup called BlockCypher, which is a platform as a service for coins. We run and maintain the software on the back end so middleware and application developers can focus on their business. My background is I graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy in Stanford. Um, I built very large scale software systems in energy management, CRM, educational um, uh, software companies, and I'm the mother of two kids. I got into Bitcoin because my co-founder and I were building an educational app, a mobile web app, and we ran into an absolute wall in processing payments because school systems run entirely on checks and cash. And so that's what led us into the digital currency world. Hi, I'm Stephanie Murphy. I am the host of a podcast called Let's Talk Bitcoin, and many people here may know me from that podcast, but I also do a lot of other things. Um, I'm a voiceover artist. I have my own business where I do voiceovers, and I do a lot of my business in Bitcoin. I've been in the Bitcoin world since 2011, which was pretty early. I found out about Bitcoin from Free Talk Live, which is another radio show that I'm involved with hosting, and I couldn't be more excited about the potential for Bitcoin to um, bring freedom to people all over the world, men and women, but of course it has some special applications uh, for women who really need it. And as Marnie said, there are so many people around the world who are just, who are living in poverty and who could really benefit from stuff like micro lending with Bitcoin and with be having the power to really have more control over their own finances. So. I have a lot of interest in um, humanitarian kind of stuff, but also in entrepreneurship. And I think those are kind of the two ways that Bitcoin can really have the potential to set a lot of people free worldwide. Uh, my name is Tatiana Moroz. I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I recently wrote a Bitcoin song. Um, before that, you know, I've been singing since I was a little kid. But something that's always appealed to me is, is the ability to use music to change the world and to um, help bring about social change and prevent war and, and or at least raise awareness for war and put some pressure on the overlords. Um, and when I found out about Bitcoin at first, I didn't really understand it. But in recent months, I've gotten, you know, all of a sudden the tipping point happened and I totally get it, well, sort of. And um, and it inspired me to write the Bitcoin jingle, which really turned into a song because I think that what we're dealing with here is, a, is an incredible way to withdraw support for the state, to withdraw support for war, and to create a whole other world without having to stand there with a protest sign and beg for change. I think we can just do it by uh, by participating in Bitcoin. So that's why it's exciting for me. 
All four of you have spoken to um, how, you know, as little girls, we're all socialized to stay away from tech. But I mean, Bitcoin is happening at such an accelerated pace that by the time we teach our children to get into tech and get into Bitcoin, I mean, Bitcoin will be 20 years ahead of schedule. So if you're, you know, like a grown woman, if you're maybe just starting out to go to college or you've even just graduated in uh, from an English major, how could we integrate women more into tech right out of college? Can, can I answer? Yes, of course. Okay, great. Um, Phil Mannix just uh, interviewed me today. If you go on uh, Twitter, I'm MidasMarney.com and the article's there. And um, I love what they're doing. And uh, they're, Phil Mannix is like a YouTube for really high quality videos. And they're, the model of getting the word out there is they actually pay people to do social media. And they pay them in Bitcoin starting February 1st. And what they do with that money, there's a, there's a annex, uh, a women's foundation on the side of it, and they actually put that back into training the women how to do social media in developing countries so that they can, you know, now start promoting and, and using Bitcoin and being able to have bank accounts. And so, you know, teaching people just how to use Bitcoin by, you know, paying them in Bitcoin is, is a huge way. It's a huge way. It's absolutely massive. Yeah, I think there's also a level, um, there's, there's something in between a Bitcoin consumer and a founder of a Bitcoin startup or tech company. There's the mom who blogs and wants to get tips in Bitcoin. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. And like anyone can do that. And it's a lot less intimidating than starting a company, for instance. And so when I first learned about Bitcoin, my, my first thought wasn't actually what can I buy with this, but how can... I get paid in this. <laughs> exactly. Paying people. I think that's key. So I, I started thinking of like kind of little business ideas. And at the same time in my life, um, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the panel, but I am actually, I have a PhD in biochemistry. I'm a former research scientist. And I stopped working in science because I basically wasn't happy with the lifestyle. And I wanted to do something else. And so now I focus on Bitcoin and have my voiceover business. But I, I was really interested uh, at the time when I was really catching fire with Bitcoin of, you know, how can I work for myself and how can I have a lifestyle that enables me to have more freedom of what I do with my time and more financial freedom of what I can do with my own money that I earn. And Bitcoin seemed like a wonderful solution to that. Um, and so I think it's a big selling point, especially for mothers who are looking at uh, jobs where they can spend more time with their kids, you know, maybe passive income streams so they don't have to go to a job, a nine to five, if that's not something something they want to do. Um, now they have the option to do that and to use Bitcoin to help enable them as a tool to have more personal freedom in their lives. Um, so I think that's just a huge selling point. And, you know, it takes all, all types. You know, some women want to be moms. Some women don't want to be moms. Some women want to have nine to five. Some women don't. Um, and we can really appeal to all of them <laughs> with Bitcoin. That's the great thing about it. So fine. Oh, go ahead. well. Um, so we're all talking about bringing women into the tech angle. I think that um, you know, I, I think that women can bring other things to it. Like we don't necessarily have to be put into the tech aspect of it in order to be valuable. Like I think that the way that women communicate with other women and the way that women communicate with people is totally different than the the nerdy people that are behind not no offense to the nerds, but <laughs> um, <laughs> that are behind the protocol. You know, and, and I think that it takes all kinds. It's it's a community that we're trying to build here, not just um, a protocol and, and like the, the tech angle and, and I think that that should be celebrated, I guess. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Completely concur. Thanks, Marnie, for filling in for Pua, who are really sad, can't be here today. Uh, she was really instrumental in something that was really exciting that took place with um, women. And it was Ala Kalani, the uh, Botswana Bitcoin lady. Um, and she tweeted something that she had read on Motherboard that was an article that was done uh, interviewing this woman in Botswana, Africa. And within like 15 minutes of that tweet, I had the author's 
address, which I never would have been able to get except through the internet. I mean, you know, that I would have had to, you know, snail mail and whatever. I mean, it just happened like that. And then sent her some Bitcoin. She had like received four Bitcoin within a couple days. It was life changing for her. Now that's all a really fun, exciting story. And people go, "Wow!" What they don't understand is if I'd sent her $184 in cash, she would have had to walk 20 miles. She probably would have been raped on the way there. And then if she left, she would have been left with like 80 bucks out of the 184, and the rest would have gone to the state and to the people that are, you know, taking that money. Uh, for the service, and then she would have been robbed on the way home. So this is not, I mean, you know, we talk about what we can buy and education in the United States, but it, what's, it's going to revolutionize uh, life for the 70% of women in India that don't have access to feminine hygiene products, you know? And so there's so much social change that can be done. So I wanted to ask you, Stephanie, whom I've known for a, while, a long time, in considering, and, um, kind of what you've seen through the conferences and through Let's Talk Bitcoin in terms of like social change, just addressing things that we take for granted here in the United States. We're all talking about college education. These women can't get tampons. 